his legs are getting numb. He's starting to pass out. He can't breathe. He's tired of struggling. Cross. Strong connection to the church. We can see the street sign. Converted Pisces. He can't breathe. Wake up. These are the true stories of real cases and the psychics who help investigators solve their most baffling mysteries. Nine one one, what is your emergency? I'm worried about my son. He's a paramedic and he missed his shift at the hospital today. He's not answering his phone. Something must be wrong. Okay, what is his name? Patrick McNeil. He's a student at Fordham University in the Bronx. I'll send an officer right over to check on him. 10 4 Central, we're responding. Well, we went to Fordham and we talked to some classmates and his roommates. And not only had he missed work, uh, he had missed class. And this was just totally unlike Patrick. He was known as being very, very dependable. Uh, so for him not to show up to work or to class was totally out of character. Well, we had learned that Patrick was last seen on the Upper East Side in a bar the night before. And they were having a college night, so there were a lot of people from Fordham. But we tracked down the people who were in that bar that night, and we found that Patrick had told them he was going to go back to Fordham. Uh, he was going to take the train there. Uh, we found one young lady who said that she and Patrick had agreed to go back together. And she said to Patrick, just wait a few minutes, she wants to use the bathroom. And when she came back, Patrick was gone. She said he just kind of disappeared. We assumed that Patrick was planning on taking the subway home. And one of the things that we did was trace what route would he have taken from this bar to the subway that would get him back to Fordham. Uh, in doing that, we saw that there were some surveillance cameras on the street, and we were able to get film from those cameras. It's a long shot, but police search the footage from the night Patrick disappeared. Just before midnight, they get a hit. Patrick had hailed a cab. We were able to trace that cab down and spoke to the cab driver who was working that night. And he told us that Patrick had flagged him down. He seemed inebriated. He wanted to go to Portchester, where the McNeil family lives, which is a uh, town about uh, 30 minutes outside of New York City. The cab driver said, why don't you take a train home? Like that's the last that the cab driver saw. Despite impressive detective work, police lose McNeil's trail. The possibilities of where he went next are endless. I think you, you know, generally hope for the best. You know, he went out, maybe he got too much to drink, and, uh, you know, he's sleeping it off, or he met a girl, and he's going to come back in a day or two. But there's always the possibility that it could be foul play. But in this case, police don't have the luxury of waiting for answers. White male, 20 years old. His father was very well connected politically. His mother was the uh, goddaughter of Cardinal O'Connor, powerful cardinal in St. Patrick's Cathedral. I was one of uh, 20 detectives that were called to investigate the uh, disappearance of Patrick McNeil. That's extremely unusual for a missing persons case. Uh, traditionally, a missing persons case is handled by one detective. There was a lot of pressure from the mayor of New York on the uh, NYPD to solve this case and to find Patrick because of his affiliation with the Cardinal of St. Patrick's Cathedral. We want to get his face out there, his description out there to as many people as possible. He had some identifying uh, marks. He had a, a Celtic cross on his right bicep, and he had a, a gold tongue ring, and that was on, on the post. Despite their efforts, there is no sign of Patrick McNeil. I 
I was asked to look into whether or not uh, Patrick's credit card accounts, his bank accounts, his debit card had been used recently. There was no activity on any of his accounts from the time he had disappeared. It was very frustrating. All leads were coming up empty. The pressure is mounting from authorities to solve the case. Then I had remembered a psychic that I had met years ago, uh, Mary Rose. I had first met Mary Rose at a restaurant. She was doing readings, and I thought it would be fun to get my reading done. I was very skeptical. In fact, I had taken off my wedding band and uh, my police department ring in the hopes of throwing her. And she knew right off the bat, not only that I was married, but I had been divorced previously and she knew I was a police officer. I was very impressed, and um, I didn't hesitate to put my reputation on the line and call her in to help out on this case. Hey, man, how are you? Hi. We had agreed to meet at a restaurant near her house. We haven't been able to find any witnesses other than uh, a cab driver who turned him down because he had he'd been drinking too much. Mm -hmm. The cab uh, turned him down somewhere right around this vicinity, and there's a lot of options of which direction he could have went in. In order for me to identify a person's location, I need the time and date last seen. I need the location. And um, from that point on, I can chart out and navigate to where they've gotten themselves to. How long has he been missing? Uh, he was last seen on uh, February 16th, 11.58 p.m. The date and time allows me to cast an astrological chart. In doing that, I become you. I literally can walk through your feet, see through your eyes, hear through your ears. I become totally you. February 16th, 11.58 p.m. I'm using the date and the time, and what that is giving me High-profile disappearance of Patrick McNeil, police hope psychic Mary Rose can help pinpoint the missing man's location before it's too late. I had no doubt in my mind whatsoever uh, when I was looking through uh, his chart. He had definitely not left New York City. He's still in the city. And Mary Rose thinks she knows where. Where are you? Where? He's on the street. Come on, Patrick. Listen up. You don't know what you're doing. Back up. Nine and a six or a six and a nine. the church. Where are you going? You can see the street sign. Oh, they look like inverted Pisces. It's 69th Street. South. Not north. Why does he want to go south? He's headed towards Brooklyn. He's in Brooklyn. Mary sensed that Patrick was uh, heading south towards Brooklyn the night that he had disappeared. 
Brooklyn didn't make any sense to me, especially since Patrick had been seen trying to get into a cab to take him to Port Chester. There didn't seem to be any reason why he would be in Brooklyn, but you need something to investigate. And with the Patrick McNeil case, we were, uh, we were running on empty. We had nothing to go on. So we were happy to entertain it, investigate it, and follow it through. Although Patrick McNeil was last seen heading north the night he disappeared, police organize a search to the south in Brooklyn. It was extraordinary, the, uh, the volunteers that came out. There was approximately 1,000 volunteers handing out uh, thousands of flies. I believe it was 60,000 flies were handed out to, uh, to try to locate Patrick. But no witnesses come forward. It's extremely hard to find a missing person in New York City, especially if the person doesn't want to be found. With each passing day, the chance of finding McNeil steadily declines. With no body showing up at the morgues, with Patrick not showing up at local or tri-state area hospitals, there was no motive for him to have run away. That left us with just one last possibility, and that was that Patrick was abducted. Knowing Patrick's father's political connection and his mother's connection with the Roman Catholic Church, we, we had to consider the possibility of an abduction. Police continue to hope that media publicity will generate some leads. There was calls on a daily basis from news reporters um, there was constant uh, articles in the newspaper. It could have been an abduction. It could have been um, foul play involved. It became a hot story in, in most of the media in New York. You never know who that one person might be who sees that on the 6 o'clock news, sees that picture and says, wait a minute, I've been passing that guy every day on my way to work. You never know who might break the case. Hotline. I think that the uh, missing man, the guy you're looking for, Patrick McNeil, just walked into my real estate office. Three weeks after Patrick McNeil disappears, he's spotted in a real estate office in Queens. The police responded immediately. Uh, they just missed him. He had just left the office, but the real estate agent said he had just gotten on a bus outside. And the police boarded the bus and were able to ascertain that although the person did bear some resemblance, it definitely was not Patrick. Whenever sightings were reported to the police department, the investigators went out there and followed up. There was a lead where a doorman thought he saw Patrick McNeil uh, walking past his building. By the time police were able to arrive, uh, the man had disappeared into the crowd. We have 8 million people who reside or work in New York City. It makes it that much more difficult to try to find someone. Patrick McNeil had been missing for five weeks at this time, and we still had no leads. As the days slip by, the possibility that Patrick may be in danger becomes a greater concern. There was a lot of sensitivity to this case due to the family's uh, connections politically. Detective Croce intensifies his efforts and turns back to psychic Mary Rose. He takes her to Brooklyn, the place where she believes McNeil will be found. I know he's in Brooklyn. As a matter of fact, when we get to the other side of this bridge, can we pull over someplace because I want to check out my charts? I'm a bulldog. If I feel that there is a direction that a person has headed in, I will stay on that person's back until I find him.
He's cold. He's cold. He needs help. He's in a tremendous amount of danger. Pisces. Patrick was a Pisces. Two inverted fish. It looks just like a six. And just like a nine. Pisces. It's 69th Street. He's got Pisces in the ninth house. Pisces is usually ruled by the 12th house, which is connected to the church. So peaceful. So calm. Inominus Patri. So quiet. Amen. Inominus Patri. The river looks so strange. So strange. And the water's freezing cold. So cold. He needs help. He can't breathe. Where are you now? I need you. Please, now. Please help me. Please. Joey, he's in the river. He's definitely in the river. You're going to find him in the water, maybe a pier somewhere, but that's where you're going to find him. And Mary Rose has a lead on the exact location. Be right off the old, the old, the old ferry pier at 69th Street. Will Mary Rose be right? Psychic Mary Rose has pinpointed the location where she believes Patrick McNeil will be found. He's in the river. Be right off the old. The old, the old ferry pier at 69th Street. So, so the 69th Street pier. After Mary Rose had told us that Patrick Camille was in the East River, I didn't contact the, the harbor unit or the scuba team to try to locate him because it, I needed some more corroborating evidence, something else that would back up um, her statement. We still had to keep hope that he was alive. I mean, after all, this is, this is still a psychic telling us this information. This isn't based on concrete evidence. Police never follow up on the psychic's lead. go by. Well, we left our base on a usual morning patrol, and it was a day where there was a lot of debris floating in the water. I happened to notice something that caught my eye that was floating a little different than just wood and plastic. So I grabbed the binoculars and took a closer look. Uh, discovered that in fact it resembled a, a body. Harvard Charlie, Army Corps Galvin, and uh, we've located a floater off of 69th Street Pier, Brooklyn. The 69th Street Pier, Brooklyn, exactly as the psychic predicted. Tattooed on the arm of the body is a Celtic cross. The body is identified as Patrick McNeil. When Patrick was found, he, he was wearing the same clothes that he was wearing the night he had disappeared. The medical examiner ruled that Patrick had in fact died of an accidental death. He had drowned. It appeared that Patrick was possibly urinating in the East River and had fallen in due to the fact that he had drank too much that evening. Police determined that the river's current swept Patrick downstream to Brooklyn. I was very impressed with Mary's outcome and prediction on this case. Um, 
she was right on the money. I think that after Patrick McNeil was found, it made some of these skeptics a little bit more receptive to what uh, a psychic can do to help the police department. Everybody's on a journey. You start your journey from the day that you're born, you stop your journey the day you die. The point of it is, is everybody else has got to guess where you're going. I don't. If, if I had to do it again, I would definitely take advantage of uh, Mary Rose's services.